Hey everybody, it's uh, AKREX here and uh, today I will be giving you a tutorial on uh, how to weather your uh, Warhammer 30,000 Horus Heresy Javelin. And of course we're going to need our weathering powders from Forge World. And uh, I think two of them will be quite sufficient to give you the results you need, but feel free to add more different shades and flavors to it, if you so please. That's uh, perfectly fine. And uh, we're gonna need a pigment fixer. The pigment fixer will allow your uh, weathering powder to stay on the model without fading off too quickly, and also it will actually keep it in place. Uh, that's a very important counterpart to applying the weathering powders. And uh, in a moment we will be uh, viewing some other accessories that we're going to be using and uh, I will explain in more detail how we do this uh, mixture. So here you can see the very front bit is the tray where we mix the weathering powder with our pigment fixer. This is where all the magic is going to be happening so you're going to have to use maybe a 50-50 roughly to get this right. And then you apply it to the model, and uh, once it's done, you allow it to dry, but uh, not before you use your uh, sponge, which you can see right over there. Uh, the sponge is very important for creating a nice, uh, smoother surface and also giving a bit of a gradient, depending on how strong you want your you know, thing to be. And of course, tablecloth, the brush itself, and the tool to pick up the powder is going to be needed here. And uh, here, let's get started. So what we do in the order, we just open up our uh, pot with the black soot uh, powder. And uh, as you can see, I just took a little bit on the tip of that sculpting tool that I'm using right there. Just put it in a tray, nice and simple. And um, all you do is basically just uh, then pick up your uh, pigment fixer and uh, dip a little bit from uh, your brush and uh, then what you're gonna do is, oh you see I <laughs> dropped a little bit there on the table but well, it's not gonna do anything, it's not a problem but yeah unfortunately somehow a drop of it came out and you see how it spreads out quickly so yeah just gotta be a bit more careful, don't repeat my mistake there so mix this up and um, once you have achieved the mixture to your satisfaction all you have to do is just basically keep applying it uh, to the surface. So um, once I fix up the camera and uh, I will show you how I'm applying it. Hopefully it will... Uh, yeah, there we go. So you see I use all these little um, gaps and stuff like that where uh, the dust and the dirt and everything, all the stuff can get built up. And as I apply it there, what I do is pick up the sponge and rub it off. You see it creates this nice kind of effect of uh, dirtiness sort of like you know there's obviously like traces see I'm doing it right now exactly the same thing so the, essentially what you do is you just pick these gaps gaps and you keep applying the powder uh, mixture to these areas and uh, uh, you just go over it with, for the whole model and um, then of course like do the uh, hand you know the rail attachments where you attach that multi melter so um, then, uh, of course, uh, go around all these edges as well. Then, before it gets to dry out, quickly use the, uh, br you know, the, um, oh, come on, <laughs> the sponge, the sponge. So, you quickly use the sponge because if it dries up as it is, you will not be able to rub it very much. So, you want to be able to rub it just before it dries. And uh, then, when it dries, uh, you will have a very nice and neat surface. Of course, this work in particular is a little bit more sloppy than my other one. Uh, we will see the comparison of them two in the end of the video, because doing it for the camera means I don't get quite the best view of it from my perspective. And uh, as you can see, since it's the first time I'm actually doing this kind of thing, uh, I mean, in particularly like where you need to see all these little bits and pieces, it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to filming. So don't be too harsh on judgment. I do hope that it gives you enough basic idea of uh, what you need to do. It's pretty much repeating the same process over and over again. All you're doing is basically just applying the same technique to the whole model and you just have to be patient 
and uh, try to avoid getting too strong on these um, strokes. Like you see I'm doing there, I think that was a little bit strong, but uh, some of you might actually like it this way, that's fair enough. Uh, however, I do advise to avoid uh, really strong, uh, you know, uh, application of these uh, mixtures, because they can change the tone of the model completely and not quite to your satisfaction sometimes. Because not everybody likes a heavily weathered model, you know what I mean? So you gotta be a bit careful. And do it stage, stage by stage is also a good way to do it. Right now I'm kind of rushing it a little bit just to give, save some time for the video purposes. But um, yeah, don't mind my nose in the frame as well. I didn't quite get that. So, so that's gonna appear from time to time. Uh, but anyway, yes, I mean, uh, just go into these different, different areas and just feel free to apply as much as you want. It's all really down to how much uh, of the weathering strength you want to display. Like, do you want it to be quite, uh, you know, smooth or do you want it to be quite rough? What sort of area do you expect them to be? Like, depends what kind of fluff you want to get, make behind the uh, models that you're building in your army, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a very tricky one, but uh, there is no right or wrong, that's the thing. So it's, it's really up to you, but the technique is all the same, just repeat it over and over again. You know what I'm saying? And uh, once you've achieved the result, there you go, bingo, you've got it. So I'm going to be doing the same thing over on the other side, so we'll skip this part, and uh, we'll just go over to the next bit. In the next bit, what we're doing is we're preparing a new powder, which will be our light earth powder this time around. And... Uh, this one I will use to do mostly some areas at the bottom because the, uh, this will give us the actual dirt of the dust itself. So that will provide a little bit of extra flavor to the model. And as you can see, I'm applying it to the front bits, which are some strokes, just the very basic things. Of course, you can do a little bit nicer and more neat strokes if you take a bit more time. And of course, quickly dig in with your uh, sponge, doing the same thing again, and dig in with the sponge again. It's all very nice and simple, nice and easy. And if you've got plenty of time, don't rush it like I'm doing. Of course, it's a time lapse, but I was still rushing it a little bit because I'm a bit limited in time right now. I barely managed to get myself around to filming this tutorial. But uh, so I had to make sure that I could cover as much as possible in this little video that I've made here. But uh, whatever you do, don't rush it. You know, uh, allow it to kind of dry, allow it to, uh, you know, position itself a little bit too, you know what I'm saying? Just make sure you cover all these little areas, and of course add the rocket launcher over there, the cyclone missile launcher, that is. Do the same thing, like, imagine if it's speeding, you know, across the field, it might pick up, you know, the you might get into like a sandstorm or a dust, whatever, uh, things that could be flying in the air, and of course it gets a little bit dirty and built up over time. I mean, we don't know how often Alpha Legion would wash their javelin speeders, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think we really get introduced. And now, of course, uh, that, that little things there, they would help. And as you can see, the bottoms of these, like, uh, bits of the, of the engine, that's what I'm doing here, basically just doing enough to cover it so that when you see it from the top or from the tabletop perspective, you can see that these areas are completely covered. And uh, uh, there we go, that's basically what we do. So yeah, of course, as you can see now, I'm just adding a little bit more powder because I've run out. Uh, so we just top it up a little bit. And if you've uh, found that you've, you know, applied a little bit too much, um, sorry, not applied, but if you've uh, taken out a bit too much powder, don't um, dip it all in the, uh, um, in the pigment fixer. So do it portion by portion. What I uh, mean by that is basically once you have done enough and you still got a portion of it left untouched, you can chuck it back into the pot so you don't have to waste it. So that will save you some powder as well for the future. Of course, these bottom bits there, as you can see, I'm applying it like that. So that's quite important because that these areas can get dusty and now I'm just playing around with it and we're done. And now we're just uh, going to view our uh, final uh, models. So the one at the front is basically the one that uh, we uh, got for uh, comparison and the ones at the back is the one that we just done for this video. So as you can see the one at the front has a little bit 
you know, more crisp detail perhaps, but that's in my opinion at least. And uh, if you notice another little detail, I have already done the uh, effects on the engines and on the multi melter tips. I will do other videos on this as well at some point of how to do the burnt effect of weapon barrels. And uh, the headlight uh, also on the front one, as you can see, is painted black, and the other one just its own native color. So I didn't notice that detail immediately, but I thought I'll just keep it this way. And uh, of course, uh, painting these guys up was fun. It was obviously not as fun as painting a super heavy blade that I've got, but uh, in essence, exactly the same techniques all apply to these models. It's basically, you can use exactly the same technique to use um, on every single model, whether it's a marine or a tank or anything else, a dreadnought. The only thing that will be different is you might find that on the bigger things, you might want to do a little bit more different variety. Thanks for watching. Take care. Subscribe and share. Bye bye.